Yep. We'll start with hip goniometry and hip flexion range of motion. Uh, for this one, it's important to first palpate the pelvis to see when it posteriorly rotates when we take them into hip flexion. So for, and this can be done active assistively, it can be done passively if your patient's small enough, or it can be done actively. So first I'll have him help me take him up, and I, I feel the point at which his innominate starts to posteriorly rotate. Once I feel that, I ask, I ask him to hold it there. I use the landmarks of the greater trochanter for the fulcrum. The stationary arm is parallel to the midline of his body, and the movable arm is in line with the lateral epicondyle of the femur. We can also do hip flexion with the knee straight. This measures hamstring flexibility. Again, it's important to palpate the innominate to see when the pelvis posteriorly rotates. That's when we stop the measurement. So we take him up this way. And here I feel his pelvis start to posteriorly rotate, so I stop and we can take a similar measurement there using the greater trochanter as the fulcrum, lateral epicondyle of the femur as the, the movable arms landmark and stationary arm parallel to the midline of the body. Make sure that the other leg is straight. If the other, the other hip is bent, that will posteriorly rotate, is more likely to posteriorly rotate the anominate. Then we can do hip abduction and hip adduction. For this one, I'm going to ask the patient to palpate his ASISs. We're going to use an imaginary line between these two landmarks as the stationary arms landmarks. Then we're going to use the midline of the patella to guide our movable arm. We can again do this passively or active assistively. I take him out to end range. Once I move past end range, I start to see his pelvis drop or hike on respective sides. So that's when I'll take the measurement. Again, landmark being the ipsilateral ASIS for the fulcrum, an imaginary line between the two ASISs as the stationary arms landmarks and the midline of the patella for the movable arm. For adduction, we need to clear the other leg out of the way a bit, so we just put it towards the opposite side of the table. We use the same landmarks, and we can adduct until we see movement of the pelvis, and take that measurement the same way. Next, we can ask him to move into prone. For hip extension, we use the same landmarks we used for hip flexion. Greater trochanter as our fulcrum, midline of the trunk as our stationary arm, and lateral epicondyle of the femur for our movable arm. Uh, this one should be done with the knee straight to limit the effect of the rectus femoris. And usually this is an active assistive motion because the leg is very heavy. So he goes into a full extension. We make sure that his ASIS remains on the plinth, and we take the measurement there. And the last two we have are internal and external rotation sitting on the side of the bed. I'll do his right leg. And you can either ask the patient to put their hands underneath their femurs like so, or you can use a towel. Uh, but the intention here is to make the femur parallel to the ground. We use the midline of his femur as our fulcrum. Our stationary arm goes perpendicular to the ground or to the table. And our movable arm moves in line with the anterior shaft of the tibia. Uh, when we internally rotate, we want to make sure his hip doesn't lift up off the plinth like he's doing there and we can take the measurement of internal rotation. And then we can move into external rotation, making sure his femur stays vertical, stationary arm perpendicular to the ground or plinth, movable arm in line with the tibia.